So everything basically what we need are two modules. So one time we need a module with the ESP32 on it. In my case, I'm using a VMOS D1 Mini. And on the other side, we just need an I2S2 um, analog audio output module. I also bought one module with a PCM5102 on eBay, also quite cheap. It costed around two or three euros. I don't uh, know anymore. Um, but in general, that's it. And here you can see um, how I connected the two modules together. So the five volts are provided actually by the um, Vemos D1 Mini. And we are feeding the five volts into the audio board. And then um, on the audio board is also a 3.3 volts um, voltage regulator, which is then supplying here the um, audio DAC. Yeah, basically for the audio connection, we are only uh, needing three lines. So this is the typical three wire I2S interface with data line, with the um, word select line and the bit clock. And then we also have to do some configuration here. For example, that XMT, this is connected to the 3.3 volts output of the audio board. This means basically that the DAC is an unmute condition. Then we have that FMT, which is the um, format selection. I pulled it to low to use the I2S protocol. That DMP is the de-emphasis, which is a switch to off. Then we have a filter pin, um, which is set to normal latency. And then also we have a serial, um, serial clock port, which is normally used for the master clock input of the I2S. But as the um, audio DAC has an integrated PLL, we can just pull it down to low. This is recognized. And then the PLL is using the signal here from the bit clock and it's generating its own internal clock. Yeah, and from hardware configuration, that's all. And yeah, basically what we need now is like the complete tool chain um, from Espressive. And this uh, you can just download and install. So here's a good step-by-step -step guide how you can install it. It is available for Windows, Linux, and also Macintosh here. And after you have installed the tool chain, you can have a look into the example codes. So this is um, the normal repository uh, you have then on your computer after the installation. Um, I put it directly on the C drive, but it must not be necessarily on the um, same folder as I have it here. But if you go now to examples here, to Bluetooth, um, to BlueDroid, classic Bluetooth, and then you have an example code which is called A2DP Sync. And this is basically what we need. It is just an example code for receiving the audio signal via Bluetooth and put it out on the I2S interface. So, but now, before uh, we try to compile this project, let's have a look into the source files. You can see there is one main file, and then there are some two um, additional uh, C files for the uh, Bluetooth uh, connection. If you want to make yourself a custom uh, Bluetooth name, you can just go to this main file here, and then let's have a look for ESP speaker because this is the default name. And then you can see that you can set here any random name. So let's make another name, for example, to hello YouTube, save this. And then um, the Bluetooth name will be shown like this. But um, before I was recording this video, I of course tried it out this project and basically everything was also working fine. But the only problem was um, if I have my smartphone here, for example, and I just make here louder or something like this, then usually it is not like this, that the samples directly on the smartphones are modified and then like sent to the Bluetooth empfänger like on a louder level. Um, the loudness must be um, processed on the receiver side. So the smartphone just gives a command, hey receiver, please make it more louder or something like this and then usually it's processed on the receiver side, as I said. And the problem was that it did not care uh, how I set the volume here on the smartphone. The loudness level was always the same on the receiver. And yeah, basically I fixed this problem. If you go here into the source code, you can see that there is an I2S handler. And yeah, this is basically the source code um, where the samples or the received samples are written into the I2S buffer. And what I did, 
is um, that I just have the uh, variable, which is called s underscore volume here inside the source code, which is always receiving the loudness level from the smartphone. And then the samples are basically modified here and recalculated to the um, yeah, output level it should have basically. Um, I just will put this uh, modified source code on my GitHub. So in case you're downloading all that expressive uh, toolchain stuff, then just use my uh, code from my GitHub and then it should work. But also hopefully expressive will uh, bug fix this problem soon. So, and as soon as you have connected the um, ESP32 board, we should have a look into the hardware manager that we know on which uh, COM board it is. In our case, it is COM5 here. And now we can open the um, ESP toolchain by just opening the ESP IDF common prompt. Oh, it's on my other screen, but you can see it here now. And then let's move um, into the direction of the example codes by, for example, change direction examples. Um, then we go to change direction Bluetooth. Then we go to Blue Droid, then we go to Classic, then we go to the A2DP sync. So very at the beginning we have to put the command idf.py and make menu config. And then uh, some colored window uh, should open, which will uh, then write a configuration file. You will see in a couple of seconds. So basically what you can do here is, for example, change a little bit the configuration. Um, let me have a look. For example, here you can see if you want to use the i squares interface on which I O ports it should be, or if you want to use, for example, the internal DAC instead of the i squares output. But we want to use the i squares output for sure. And then we press save press OK and then we can exit and then the configuration file is written and then we type in idf.python and make a build. So this will take a little bit of time now, therefore I will skip now the next couple of minutes. So now the build is finished and we can flash it now to our ESP32. And for this, we just typing in here idf.python minus p, which means port. This was like com5, and then we press flash. So now everything is uploaded onto the ESP32. This takes a couple of seconds. And then the hardware should be ready. And now we are just turning on our serial monitor. So therefore we also press idf.py minus port com5 and then monitor. And then we can see all the output here. For example, that like DMA is started or that the i square SPLL is started, I don't know. So now I take my smartphone and turn on the screen recording so that you can see what I'm doing here on my smartphone. Then I will go to the settings to Bluetooth and then you can see that here is like already the entry of Hello YouTube. So I'm just connecting to this and you can see that um, it has already connected successfully and waiting now for the input samples. Now I go to the voice memos and I will record now some random stuff. I don't know. Test, 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 one, two, check, 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 check. And now if I will play this, you should hear it in the background because I have connected my ESP32 audio adapter to my sound system. I will record now some random stuff. And I also if I make it uh, louder or so or change the check, volume, check, check, check. you can see that this is also received here. Yeah, and that's it. Yeah, thanks a lot for watching. I hope you liked it. In case you liked it, uh, press the like button here and see you next time.